Yeah, g'day, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Hey, uh, firstly, thank you very much for those who took the time to um, provide some comments on the last video. That was certainly um, useful for me. Um, what I've decided to do, I, um, I am going to build uh, an FT8 um, transceiver. Um, I must admit, it, it's, a, it's a mode I haven't really played with before. Uh, I'm certainly not going to get into the debate about you know, whether it is a, a real mode or for amateur radio or not. Um, you know, as I've said many times, uh, amateur radio is, is all about individuals and, 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 and what they like and enjoy. So, uh, um, like I say, not going to get into that debate at all. Um, so, in terms of the FT8 transceiver, I thought I'd just put forward a, a quick video now, and I'll try and keep it as short as I can, just to, to solicit some more ideas about um, this particular rig. Um, and, and what I mean by that is, um, my thinking is, and my understanding from looking around, no, noting that I haven't really played with FT8 before, is they all seem to be on fixed frequencies. So for 80 megahertz, um, 3.573 megs, for, for 40 meters, 7.074, and for 20 meters, 14.074. Uh, I'm just going to stick with those bands for now, as opposed to trying to cover um, the entire HF um, band. So I'm sort of thinking, hence the question marks, about having... Uh, a radio that, you know, rather than having a, a rotary encoder to, to select any specific frequency and having a display, uh, so dispensing with that and instead just having a, um, a simple switch that allows me to switch to say 80, 40 and 20 uh, metres that is, no display and just um, run on the understanding that I'll be transmitting uh, on, those, on those three fixed frequencies. So uh, I guess that's the sort of the first question. Fixed or, or or not fixed, I can go either way. Uh, in terms of um, the, the the configuration of the radio itself, um, from what I can see, there's actually quite a few um, double sideband low power rigs out there in various kit forms. Um, I can go either way, you know. In terms of double sideband, um, I'll be more than happy to to, to go down that route and say use an an any six one two. Um, or maybe a double balanced mixer like the SBL1 or the ADE-1. Yeah, I've got no problems going that way. Um, or you know, go for a full-on single sideband radio, um, and, and again utilize either of those in terms of mixers. Um, and then being single sideband, obviously requiring that sort of crystal filter in the IF band. Um, I do have a couple of. Crystal, uh, crystal filters still sitting in the junk box. Now these, even though they run on uh, 3.395 megahertz as an IF, now they'll still, they'll still be usable and I think um, wouldn't be too bad again for those sort of three frequency bands there. One is um, over here, single side band, and this one's CW. Um, both would be fine. Uh, my feeling there is, you know, if the FT8 signal using those eight frequencies and only spanning 50 kilohertz um, then you know I'm going to squeeze well within um, that CW band width there of this one here so um, yeah that could be quite a nice way of actually building a, um, a single sideband FT8 transceiver using, an F, uh, using a CW filter but again um, again uh, hence the question mark you know what would be the preference sort of go for a double sideband or, or go for a single side bend. Again, I don't mind which way we go. Uh, in terms of the output power, uh, in fact, before I go any further, I'll just come back. Um, in terms of providing either the local oscillator here or both the local oscillator and the BFO over here, um, I would probably go, I think, again, because they're cheap and simple, and I've got quite a few of them lying around, is the old um, SI5351. I know, I've used, I know I've used it several times before, but you know, it's it's a nice, easy way of going. It fits in well with having those fixed frequencies. Um, uh, you know, like I say, it's it's nice and easy, and, and why not? Uh, in terms of the microcontroller itself, you know, two options there. They they cost both exactly the same here in New Zealand, five dollars. Uh, either the uh, the Pro Mini over here or the AT Tiny eighty five. Um, again, because I'm only I did double check the specs on this in terms of I two C. I'm pretty sure there is, uh, but either way. Uh, if I'm going to go with a um, a fixed type frequency system and not requiring an, a rotary encoder and a display, uh, then I can get away with having next to no um, uh, next to no you know, need for a whole lot of um, I/O ports there. So, nah, 
like I say, it'll be uh, one of those two, nice and simple. Um, in terms of output power, again, I can sort of stick down with the QRP, noting that you know, FT8 uh, is a, a low power um, and you know, low signal strength type receiver, um, or mode, I should say. Um, again, from what I can see out there, 5 watts seems to be quite a, a common uh, kit in terms of FT8. Uh, but then again, I'm sort of quite happy if I want to uh, to go up to that sort of 10 watts. Um, my thinking is, I, I wouldn't mind for my particular build uh, making this more portable so I can take it away with me. Uh, not so much on tramping trips, but certainly on uh, trips away when, you know, when we're staying in a hotel or a, um, an Airbnb and whatever. Um, I sort of can crack open here and I'll, I probably will utilise either um, this little netbook here or, or my other laptop computer. Um, which then also brings into um, a question uh, what I, I'm thinking about, you know, even though this laptop here has um, an I.O. port in terms of the microphone and the speaker, um, I'm sort of thinking about using, and I've said it used before, and, and why not, I've had this lying in the junk box for, gosh, for a long, long time, is a, a really cheap um, and it's something along the lines of a dollar, you know, a couple of dollars, and not much at all, USB to sound card. Um, so I'm half tempted to, to use this uh, in the build and just have that sort of one connection going between the, uh, the computer and the box, or the transceiver that is, um, to, to provide the interface. So that's what I'm sort of thinking, uh, as opposed to having sort of two additional... Uh, wires carrying both the uh, the mic and the audio to and from the transceiver, uh, and then sort of back to that output power, either sort of five watts or or maybe looking at something a little bit higher, uh, you know, push pull type arrangement with slightly more beefy transistors up to that sort of ten watt range. Um, again, open to suggestion, open to ideas. Um, I, I'm not wedded to any one of these ideas um, here. I'm I'm happy to go either way. But you know, if there was a, a preference or a desire or, or, or something else from those uh, watching, yeah, please uh, leave a comment and we'll go from there. Um, in the absence of any comments, what I will probably do uh, is definitely go down the fixed line. I think that'd be a nice way to go. Um, I think for completeness, I will probably go with a single sideband. Um, I might go with the NE612s just to get a little bit of gain at the same time on either side of that, um, that, that CW filter there. Um, and like I say, have the SBL1 and then uh, utilize that sound card. So that's what I'm sort of thinking there uh, at the moment. But like I say, uh, open to suggestions. Anyway, I'll keep this nice and short, 73s, and uh, we'll talk to you shortly.